You are watching a Modern Air Combat Environment tutorial video made on behalf of Battlespace Simulations by Close Air Solutions. Here is a brief overview of what we will cover in this tutorial video. In the last tutorial, we were conducting simple attacks. We only touched on the weapon parameters in the top right section of the nine line form. The nine line form delivery parameters, combined with the system settings, allow you to set up some more complex attacks. The approach slash delivery parameters allow you to specify some additional settings for number and spacing of weapons and also weapon release distance. It is important to note that the parameters for level attack distances only work for level attacks. It allows you to simulate a release within a release basket for certain weapons. For a level release, you can select a distance or a percentage of the maximum range of the weapon that you are using. The maximum range for weapons is specified in an XML file outside of MACE, which can be edited using BSI's Mission Object Configuration tool, the MOCT, but this is not included in this tutorial. If I select an aircraft and specify a level attack with an AGM-65, for example, and specify maximum range, and then hit the attack without IP, you can see the waypoint spacing for the final leg in the mission area. If I re-specify with a minimum range and then hit attack without IP again, you can see the length of the final leg decrease significantly. MACE allows multiple weapon releases. If I want to release multiple weapons on the same target, then I can specify the number of weapons in the approach and delivery section here. Please note that this is not the multiple designated points of impact function. That comes later in this tutorial. When you select multiple weapons, you can select the amount of time between the weapon release in seconds to the right hand side like this. I will select a number of weapons with a long release time here. You can see during release the spacing between the weapons. One last thing to discuss here is the laser attenuation setting. This is accessed in the system settings menu via the view tab on the menu ribbon. If it's switched on, then MACE will make a calculation based on the meteorological visibility set within the MACE mission settings as to when a laser weapon can actually see the designating laser reflection from the target. If there is not sufficient time, 7 seconds minimum for the weapon to guide, it will fall ballistically. Also in the system settings menu, there is an option under the mission defaults tab that allows laser guided weapons to guide onto the source of laser energy. If this is switched on, and you attack on a dangerous heading such as directly towards a ground designator, then the bomb will guide to the source of the laser energy. If you don't want to laser designate weapons with platforms other than the releasing platform, i.e. a self-des attack, there is a simple checkbox in the nine line that forces the releasing platform to designate correctly for itself. It's in the approach and delivery section here. If you wish the weapon to hit the target at a specific mission time, rather than the aircraft just pushing when ready, you can select a time on target in the attack timing section here. If you are conducting an attack with more than one aircraft, then the second aircraft weapon will hit the target at the time on target you set, 
plus the asset spacing you set in this approach and delivery section. I have set a pair of aircraft up to be split by 15 seconds. They will attack the target with a laser guided weapon. I've ticked the aircraft self designation checkbox so I don't have to worry about setting up any other platform's laser codes. If I hit the attack without IP button now, then you can see the aircraft enter an orbit until their attack timing comes in. You can see displayed in the aircraft asset section of the form the time to impact and the time to release for each aircraft. When their timing comes in, they proceed along the waypoint path to drop their weapons on the target at the correct time on target and 15 seconds after for the second aircraft. Note that when they drop the weapons and commence the self-designation, a line originating from the designator to the target is shown in the MACE mission area. Next to the line is the laser code that is entered. There are a number of ways that you can designate laser guided weapons from other platforms. These include designation by a JTAC using a joystick or simulated military equipment, designation from a camera view like a sensor pod, and also designation from within MACE using mouse clicks. In order to conduct a laser attack, both the releasing platform and the designator platform must have the same laser designator code, called the PRF. If they do not, then the weapon will fall ballistically and may not hit the target. The code can be set in a few ways. If you right click on the platform and look in the platform properties form, you'll find under the general section, laser designator code. You can overtype the code here. You can also use the entity control window. If you do not see it, then navigate to the entity control tab on the top menu ribbon and click the four way red arrow in the maneuver section. You can then overtype the PRF in the bottom right box. Note that the PRFs you have just entered are for the designators. If you enter that PRF on the aircraft that is dropping, it does not mean that the weapon it drops will be dropped with that laser code. The weapon laser code is set within the nine line form in the air assets section for each air asset in a box under the asset name. An alternative to the easy self-designation checkbox is to manually designate the target from another platform. This could be either a ground platform such as the JTAC or perhaps an air platform such as another aircraft. Or alternatively, you can designate the attack yourself from the pod camera view on the same aircraft that releases the weapon. Remember, you need to match the PRF of your designating platform to the PRF that you set in the Air Assets section of the 9 line as we saw previously. If you are designating from an aircraft pod, or sensor view, otherwise known as the camera view in MACE, then select the designating aircraft, in this case a UAV orbiting the target. Select it with the left mouse button. Go to the View tab and lock your camera to the aircraft by clicking the bottom lock button and checking that the bottom lock dot appears on the right hand side of the platform icon in the mission area. This way, if you click onto another platform, the sensor pod view won't change. It will remain attached to the platform you clicked bottom lock on. Using the image generator channel that is displaying the pod camera view, I can lock my camera to the target 
by using the Entity Target Selection tool on the Entity Top Menu ribbon and then clicking on the target. Or, alternatively, I could copy the target coordinates from the 9-line form into the Entity Control window and click the Snap Camera to Location icon. Using the joystick controls to control the camera that are set in system settings, I can slew the camera around, zoom and re-slew to the target. I can laze the target too. Note that when I laze, there is a line extending from my aircraft to the target on the MACE mission area with my laser code. All I need to do now is initiate an attack but without the Aircraft Self-Designates checkbox selected. For this attack, we will use a Time 2 target of 2 minutes. This means that provided the aircraft can physically reach the target from where it is, when I press the Attack Without IP button, it will orbit until the timing comes in and then proceed to make the weapon hit the target 2 minutes after I press that button. You see that as I press the attack without IP button, the time to impact is exactly two minutes and counts down from there. I can clear the aircraft hot and the weapon is released. It is falling ballistically until I designate from my pod camera view. If I move my pod off target, and lays, you can see that the weapon impacts at my pod crosshairs, not at the original target position. Ground designating for a laser weapon is really no different from what we did by buddy lasing from the camera view, except you're lasing from a first person view. Again, I have to make sure that the ground platform lasing is using the same PRF as is specified for the weapon in the CAS 9 line form. It can be useful to place the ground designating unit on high ground or on a rooftop to get a better view of the targeting area. To place a ground unit on a rooftop, you need to make sure a parameter called roof clamping is selected in the platform properties form. If you do not, then the unit will be inside of the building instead of on top of it. Right click on the platform and in the platform properties form locate roof clamping and ensure it is checked. You can then use the left control key and the left mouse button to drag the unit on top of a building. One useful addition in a ground designated attack is a check on the laser safety zones. If I select an observer in the 9 line form, i.e. the one who is doing the designation, MACE will calculate whether my final attack heading falls within the safe zone for laser engagements and show a message to the user. The attack is set up the same as before, except this time, after the weapon release, I laser from the ground platform. Exactly the same effects occur. The weapon impacts the ground designation crosshair, providing the laser codes are matched and the ground designator designated the target at least 7 seconds prior to impact and that the weapon was in range of the target. MACE supports multiple independent targets for each platform from within the 9-line form Air Assets section. This is a very useful capability for simulating multiple JDAM drops on high fidelity coordinates. To conduct a multiple target drop, select the attack parameters, air assets and weapons in the normal way as for any 9-line. Then, instead of selecting a target position in the usual way, tick the Multiple Targets checkbox. Click the now active Edit button and this will activate the target table to the right hand side of the form. You can add to it like you do with any target in the 9-line form by typing a coordinate 
or copying and pasting it. You can add from the map by clicking the multi-select from map button and clicking the positions or entities on the mission area. When you've finished adding, re-click the multi-select from map button. You can also select any available ground platform by double clicking on the target call sign box on the left hand side of the table. You can assign an individual laser code PRF for each weapon if it's a laser enabled weapon. You'd want to do this if you had multiple designators. If you want to double up on any of your targets with another asset in your 9 line form, you can click the Copy Targets to All Assets button. When you're done editing the target list, press close. Now, when I attack, you'll see a multiple weapon release and the weapons impacting the different target locations. You can conduct off-platform designation from within MACE itself. To do this, match the laser codes of the releasing aircraft and the designator platform as before. Select the designator platform using the left mouse button and use the targeting button from the entity control menu to assign it the target. In the entity control menu, there is a weapon release button. From here, you can select the laser target designator and manually turn it on and off. You will see when you turn it on the laser designation line coming out of the platform to the target and the laser code that you set by the side of the line. Here is the summary of what we covered in this tutorial video.